Hello, good evening. It's 10 p.m. Republic Day here in Accra, Ghana. 11 p.m. in Lagos, Nigeria. 6 p.m. in New York in the United States and 1 a.m. in Zagreb, Croatia. I'm Stephen Enti and this is News at 10. We're live from the News Hub at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. You can follow our live stream on Facebook and on 3news.com. Let's start with the day's news summaries. President Takufuado says he had no choice but to act on the recommendations of the committee set up by the Chief Justice to remove the EC chairperson, Charlotte Ose, and her two deputies. Speaking to the Ghanaian community in Mauritania on the sidelines of the 31st AU summit, the President noted the law is no respecter of persons. And some 50 residents have been rescued at Esreso in the Bosomtri district of the Ashanti region after Saturday's floods. The victims were trapped in their homes during the downpour. A joint rescue operation by the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, and the Ghana National Fire Service carried out the exercise. And the Ghana LPG Operators Association says it will take legal action if government goes ahead to implement the cylinder recirculation module. The, the gas operators have long kicked against the program which they argue would lead to the collapse of their businesses. And the Vice President Dr. Mohamedou Baumia has urged Ghanaians to shun their political and religious differences and prioritize nation building. He made the observation at an event to mark this year's Senior Citizens Day in Accra. On the international front, Mexicans are choosing a new president after a campaign marred by some of the worst political violence for decades. More than 130 candidates and political workers have been killed since campaigning began in September. Those were our major news highlights. Let's start with our very first story uh, from Estreso in the Bosumchi district of the Ashanti region, where we're told that 50 residents have been rescued after Saturday's floods. The victims were trapped in their homes during the downpour. Here is a report by correspondent Benjamin Adu. A joint rescue operation by the National Disaster Management Organization, NATMO, and the Ghana National Fire Service carried out the exercise. Adompoise and Abrabo new site. Some of the victims spent the night in classrooms of nearby public basic schools. We were indoors when the flood entered our rooms, compelling us to leave. As of now, I've lost everything. I felt it was a spillover from a dam. We are really struggling and plead with government to come to our aid as we have lost all our belongings. The station officer at the regional fire service headquarters, Dominic Kumi, attributed the cause of the flooding to putting up structures on waterways. Those who are having land in the riverside, any time they see that there is rain, they have to secure themselves. But other than that, always we have this, the same problem. Busum Trade District NADMO coordinator Yao Ichampong called for laws to stop the practice. Uh, we are pushing forward for an ally that is going to help us take actions against people who build in waterways, which is going to empower NADMO because as we stand now, we don't have any constitutional element that is supporting our activities. Meanwhile, squatters who were evicted from the Anyam Anglonga Junction slum in Kumasi following the flash floods are still counting their losses after the exercise. They describe the action by the KMA and NADMU as violation of their human rights and appealed to the government to come to their aid. Kumasi and its environs witnessed massive flooding Thursday night after a five-hour downpour leading to the death of 10 people. Some communities remain cut off from the regional capital. 
And President Kufuado says he had no choice but to act on the recommendations of the committee set up by the Chief Justice to remove the EC chairperson, Charlotte Say, and her two deputies speaking to the Ghanaian community in Noa Court in Mauritania on the sidelines of the 31st AU summit. The President, however, noted the law is no respecter of persons. More than 500 Ghanaians reside in Mauritania's capital, Norchot. The last time a Ghanaian president visited Mauritania was in 1989, when Flight Levin Rawlings visited that country. Ghanaians here are mostly in dry fish and cow skin production. Spokesperson Charles Osafo recounted the difficulties in renewing their passports since there is no Ghana mission. President Ikofuado assured them of the establishment of an honorary consul in Mauritania. A mini silence was observed in remembrance of former Vice President Parkwisi Misaatha, who passed on Friday morning. And so when those of all the faithful departed rest and abide in the bosom of the Almighty. On the removal of the Electoral Commission chairperson and her two deputies, President Ikofuado said the action was based on recommendations by a committee set up by the Chief Justice. The law states that I accept any recommendations made by the committee. Reason why I had to take that decision. He added his action was purely constitutional and called for support for their replacement. The president encouraged Ghanaians living abroad to register for the national identification card when it gets to their turn. <laughs> We have begun the registration process in Ghana. After, it will be your turn. I mean, at the end of the day, the AU will also have a card for all of us Africans. So it will make the movement between our countries much easier. And the 31st ordinary session of the Assembly of Heads of States and Governments of the African Union is under, underway in Mauritania's capital, Nouachort. Uh, for the next two days, the African leaders will dedicate themselves towards coming up with strategies to deal with, the corruption, uh, with corruption on the continent. This year's ordinary session of the Union is on the theme, Winning the Fight Against Corruption. The opening ceremony featured a number of messages, including a statement from the AU chairperson, Paul Kagame of Rwanda. He expressed sympathy to countries that have been affected by terrorist activities recently, including Ethiopia, Mali and Zimbabwe. He condemned the attacks and called for concerted efforts to tackle terrorism on the continent. We condemn these violent attacks and convey condolences for the lives that have been lost. We are heartened by the strides made by the leadership of Eritrea and Ethiopia toward normalization of relations. You have the African Union's unwavering support. President Kufado is joining his colleagues will also be participating in high-level panel discussions about how to improve women's participation in politics. And the AU Peace and Security Council of 15 countries will meet on the sidelines of the summit Monday to discuss the threat of extremism and financing of counter-terrorism as well as peacekeeping operations. Uh, French President Emmanuel Macron is also attending. Mauritanian President Mohamed uh, Abdel Aziz said Africa urgently needs a comprehensive approach to deal with extremist attacks, taking into account the cultural and economic issues that are usually the root causes of these 
violence. So let's quickly get onto the telephone lines. We have Imano Koting, as executive director of the Africa Center for Security and Counterterrorism. Mr. Koting, thanks extremely uh, for joining us. Uh, let's look at extremism and the threat it poses to Africa. We, your, in your view, uh, would you say that African leaders have taken such threats serious, considering the measures put in place so far to deal with them? Well, thank you for having me, and good evening to your very cherished viewers. In fact, um, I will react to your question with some form of mixed feelings, in the sense that after years of independence, it baffles me that the African Union still rely on the, uh, the European Union for most of its finances. To the extent that even security and terrorism if we, is not reliant on donor support, we don't get any kind of help from our own leaders. If you look at the Sahel region, comprising Eritrea from the east to Mauritania on the west, they, uh, you realize that there have been some form of attacks and insecurity perpetrated by extremist groups and criminals. If you come to the lake, uh, uh, the, uh, the other side, the Lake Chad Basin, comprising Nigeria, Chad, Cameroon, and Niger, you know the havoc Boko Haram has created in these regions. But the challenge is that we are always reliant on the European Union and Americans for support. If you look at the G5, uh, and when you talk about the G5, it is just an armed force comprising the Sahelian countries, Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, Chad, and Mauritania. The support comes from the European Union and the United States. So, Mr. Kotu, are you so, suggesting that such support is not necessary, or you think that African leaders must uh, gradually move away from dependence on the European uh, donors for financing uh, counterterrorism, or what exactly? I mean, uh, if there's, they're in partnership with these countries, is that wrong? You see, in the age of globalization, we fight for our mutual interest. There's nothing wrong with such partnership. But if we are over-reliant on such partnership, then we creating our own initiative to combat some of these challenges. What do you, what do, what do you, what do you term as over-reliance? If you look at the African Union uh, uh, Peace and Security Council's budget, over 70% comes from donor funding. So I am saying that African leaders should take their own destiny into their own hands and contribute more. If they are able to contribute more, I think that independently we can also be able to fight some of these challenges. Don't forget, the European Union and the Americans, they are not Father Christmas. They give this donor support with strings attached. And that is why, as a continent, we are still where we are. African Union has come a very long way, and I think it is about time African countries should be able to finance the, uh, uh, the uh, African Union by itself than relying uh, solely on donor support. Mm. Mr. Kuti, I take it that your answer to my uh, question, whether African leaders are doing enough, obviously from the narrative you've given me, is no. Is no, precisely. And the, the summit is also looking at terror financing, uh, where African leaders and African countries generally would need to pull their resources together. Do you get the sense that the African leaders are ready for such commitment at all? You see, if you look at reports that the African Union has turned up over the period over security and peace, and particularly on terrorism, they are very good reports. But every now and then we get these conferences, and uh, these conferences have always been talk shops. I think it's about time we move away from the talk shop and move to realities and get the grants running. And in terrorism, you need finances. It's a very expensive enterprise. And African leaders cannot leave their destiny in the hands of donor support to fight terrorism in our continent. 
But if we look at a, a country like South Sudan, uh, there have been conflict there in the Sudan region uh, since 2013. Several peace deals have been signed and brokered. Uh, the latest was signed just last week. But none of these have been able to be adhered to. Are you hopeful that uh, by the way things are going, uh, there could be peace restored in the Sudan region between uh, South Sudan and North Sudan? You see, the South Sudan issue is a very unfortunate incident and a different ball game. And I think that if you look at South Sudan, if you remove the donor involvement in South Sudan, you see very little that African involvement is in there. Apart from Kenya, who, uh, uh, that is playing a very prominent role in South Sudan, it looks as the, Africa, the other African countries are not concerned. Apart from Kenya, Uganda, which other African country is even concerned about the situation in South Sudan? And that goes back to my point. Donor agencies are concerned, uh, uh, more particularly the U.S. and the United Nations. So I think that if the African Union really wants to live up to its expectations, like I have earlier, let's take our destiny into our own hands and let's begin to look at local solutions to our local problems. Right. More often than not, these foreign agencies that come into some of these issues, they don't understand the realities on the ground. And they are there to fulfill the paperwork of the donor agencies, people that are giving the money just to take the marks and make claims for the money they are sending to these war-torn countries. But in reality, if we take our own destiny into our own hands, we can uh, 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 look at solutions to our local problems. Right, um, and Mr. that Koti. is where we are failing as an African, uh, as African, sorry. Right. Mr. Mr. Koti, we're grateful for your time. Emmanuel Koti is a counter-terrorism expert. I'm Stephen N.T. This is News at 10. We have more news for you. Please stay. Welcome back. Let's go to our front show, still in the Ashanti region. A bridge linking several adjoining communities in the Ifijakwa Bre district uh, the, is at the verge of collapse following years of neglect. Residents claim they're being sidelined by government considering the deplorable nature of their roads. Here's a report by Chelsea Ifafrimpa and Ibrahim Abubakar. The major road linking Afrancho to several adjoining communities in the district keeps deteriorating any time it rains, affecting smooth vehicular movement. Where still is a poor state in which this bridge is. Motorists and other road users contend being terrified as the bridge is submerged after every downpour. This road was done five years ago, but it has turned to be a, a rough road now. And the difficulty is too much. This mountain that you see there is difficult to climb when it rains. And a lot of accidents also occur. Commercial drivers lament their business is not profitable due to constant breakdown of their vehicles. The flood waters usually enter our car engines, resulting in the breakdown of our vehicles. Residents want the government to, as a matter of urgency, reshape the road and repair the bridge. When we are done with the roads, then we will tackle other developmental projects. BC for Fija Kwabre, Kwesi Kakari Achimfo said the assembly is making effort to fix the road. Major roads are in fact not easy for the assembly. After uh, reshaping and doing other things, the assembly can take it up. That of Himayan and uh, Afranchu road will be able to do it. We've brought the uh, regional uh, engineer. They've come to see all this. They've sent it to Accra. And that's how we wrap up with News at 10. Thank you very much for making time. Russia Daily is up next uh, with our sports team. I'm Stephen Enti. There's more news at 3news.com. Good night.